Welcome to stage three of La Vuelta 22. After Sam Bennett's victory yesterday, the sprinters have another opportunity today and some of them will be looking to bounce back after a frustrating final in Utrecht. Tim Malia isn't the only man who's hoping to improve on his stage two performance. At just over 193 kilometers, this is the longest stage of this year's race. It's almost pancake flat with one minor climb and a more straightforward finish in Breda than yesterday's in Utrecht. Jumbo Visma should have no trouble defending the red jersey, while the sprint teams will be aiming to catch the breakaway before the intermediate bonus sprint, 26 kilometers from the line. The day's breakaway formed almost immediately with seven riders going up the road. The Spanish wildcard teams were all represented once again and they were joined by a couple of Grand Tour stage winners. Thomas de Gent, who took a Vuelta stage five years ago and won on the Giro as recently as this season, and Jan Bacalant, who triumphed on the Tour de France back in 2013. The two Belgians joined by four Spaniards, Jose Herrada of Cofidis, Pam Mikel from Kern Farmer already in the break yesterday, Ander Okamika from Burgos BH and Mikel Ituria from Uscatel Escardi. And finally, Julius van den Berg in the polka dot jersey. The Dutchman also on the attack for the second day running and following in the footsteps of his teammate Magnus Court at last month's Tour de France. The seven riders working well together, but they weren't given much rope. Bora Hansgrohe were pacing the peloton and keeping the gap steady at around three minutes. The other sprint teams getting involved as well, notably Alpecin de Koenig and Trek Segafredo. No major pressure in the peloton, yet one seemingly minor crash would have major consequences. Big crash on the right hand side. One is Mike Woods. Well, two Israel Premier Tech riders went down, their sprinter Itamar Einhorn and more importantly their GC leader Mike Woods, who ended up having to abandon the race. The wind wasn't really strong enough to cause proper echelons, but the pace was increasing in the main bunch as the gap dropped to around two minutes. The riders approaching the day's only climb, an important spot for local boy Vandenberg. It was here that he won the Dutch under 23 title in 2018. It's, uh, it's pretty special, it's, uh, it's a place where, uh, where I live to, uh, at the moment. Uh, my girlfriend is from uh, from the city of Rosendaal where we pass now, so uh, a lot of friends and family uh, are uh, are there at the moment. Yeah, it's holiday, so it's pretty flat. <laughs> we have uh, one little hill, the uh, Reis in the Weg. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit like yesterday, only even less climbing, I think. Well, this time the Dutchman was beaten by De Gent, who may be eyeing up the polka dot jersey he won at this race four years ago. The peloton didn't make the catch before the intermediate bonus sprint, perhaps preferring to save their legs for the final. De Gent coming through in first place from the breakaway ahead of Mikel and Bacalance before sitting up. His fellow escapees kept going, but the writing was on the wall. With high pace and some tricky road furniture, one of the GC favourites went to ground late on. Richard Carapaz forced a chase through the cars with the help of Pavel Sivakov and Theo Gagan Hart. They soon caught up just as the peloton was catching the breakaway. The sprint teams gearing up for another high speed finish with Alpecin de Koenig leading the way into Breda. Now they start the sprint. Ackerman gets ready. Malia gets ready. Pascal Ackerman kicks hard. Pascal and Malia pulls his foot out on the wheel. It's Pascal Ackerman. Here goes Dan McClay. Brian Cockard, but rushing through the centre in the green jersey. Shoulder to shoulder. It's Bennett and it's Dan McClay. It's Sam Bennett. Doubles up and wins in the green jersey. Bennett takes it ahead of Pedersen for the second day running with McClay, Kokar and Leinhardt completing the top five. Malia could only manage sixth place. Jumbo Visma continue to share the love when it comes to the red jersey. After Hessink and Turnison, Eduardo Affini now leads the Vuelta. No problems for Carapaz in spite of his late crash. He is still inside the top ten overall. 
There's no racing on Monday as the riders make their way to the Basque Country. La Vuelta then resumes with a fourth stage that should suit the punchers and perhaps even the GC favourites.